So here you can see the Unisphere for VMAX dashboard showing our uh, VMAX SC. We're going to have a look and try and configure some externally provisioned storage using uh, the federated tiered storage capability inside it. VMAX with uh, Ingenuity 5876. So we can see that we've previously presented uh, some devices from our EMC Clarion. Uh, we've presented two different devices, one's 100 gig and one's one terabyte, and we're going to use them in two different ways. The 100 gig one we're going to encapsulate as if it had data already in place on the Clarion and was in use by a host. We're going to encapsulate that and keep the data intact and present it out to a server. So let's start with doing that one. You can see it's very straightforward. We can see the LUNs here. There's a rescan option. If we present more LUNs or a new, new array to the host, sorry, to the VMAX. So let's click this virtualize button. All right, so we've selected our 100 gig LUN. We've got two different uh, types of uh, encapsulation. We've got external provisioning, which is where we have uh, unused space on the external array that's, that's brand new and we're not going to keep any of the data. It's going to be a dest destructive use of that storage. So that's externally provisioning. Or the other option is we can do encapsulation. So we use encapsulation when there's data that's in place on the external array and we want to keep it intact. So in this case we want to use encapsulation and we have two different types. We've got encapsulation and uh, effectively these describe the feature sets we want to be able to use. So if we encapsulate as a virtually provisioned device it means that we can use the virtual provisioning features uh, and things like virtual line migration and potentially in future fast VP can be used if we move that line around. So it's generally the best option but if we had the traditional uh, storage configuration inside the VMAX uh, with uh, thick devices or uh, or fast DP, then you could encapsulate as a traditional disk group style. In our VMAX, it's all virtually provisioned and we use fast, so we're going to encapsulate using virtual provisioning. We get to create a new disk group, um, and really it's a, a case of uh, picking a number, and we create a pool essentially associated with this one disk. So cool. We can, when we encapsulate this, if it's a large LUN, create effectively a virtual meta device. Um, but in this case, we don't really need to do that. We're just going to go and proceed. It's only 100 gigs. We can encapsulate as in one go. Great. So that's added into a configuration event which we'll now be able to execute. With our one terabyte LUN, we're going to encapsulate that and actually externally provision that. So it's a slightly different approach. When we externally provision the LUN, it means that we can use it as a, a tier within a fast VP uh, policy. You can see there, raw space. Um, and it means that we're going to be able to uh, uh, use that external disk with, uh, yeah, as a, effectively as a create a thin pool on it, and then bind tdevs to it, just like it was internal disk inside the VMAX. So same sort of process. All right, I'll add this one to the list. Remembering that this, ex when we create externally provisioned storage we're not going to maintain any of the data that exists on that external array. Great. All right, let's go and run the job now and we'll have a look. Great. All right, so let's go and run this job. We're going down here and we'll select our job list. That's going to show us our two jobs that we've created, which is to virtualize those two external LUNs. All right, so I'm just going to group those together. Yeah. 
try and so on. we're now gonna gonna run this job okay great so we can see that our job was successful it ran for approximately five minutes and it's done two jobs it's in encapsulated a 100 gig LAN for us, uh, data in place, and our one terabyte LAN, which we'll use uh, to create a thin pool in a minute. If we want to just have a quick review as to what it's actually done for us, we can have a look at the disk group tab, and it's going to show us the two new disk groups that it's created. You can see there our 100 gig LAN and our one terabyte. And you can see that our 100 gig LAN is actually already fully consumed or fully used. That's because we've asked it to, to make it uh, encapsulate the disk and have the data remain intact. And when we, because we, when we encapsulate it, we asked it to encapsulate it as a virtual device. What that means is that we've actually, it already creates a virtual pool, a thin pool for us. So we can see in here that our uh, CX100GB thin pool has been created. So there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the encapsulated disks, external disks or LUNs, and a thin pool if you want to maintain the data and have it configured in a virtual fashion. So if we have a look inside this pool, we'll see that it very friendly has done created the, uh, the pool for us and it's also created a thin device for us, the TDEV. So you can see here our TDEV192, that's uh, 100 gigabytes. So it's essentially a one-to-one -one relationship between the external disk, the thin pool, and the thin device. Obviously, we need to maintain that relationship uh, if we want to successfully access the data intact as it was on the uh, original array. So let's now provision that LUN to a server. So if we go to our provision storage wizard, we'll be able to very simply map that line out to a host. So we'll pick our symmetrics, we'll choose a Mars SMC host, which is my management server, and we'll create a new storage group. And we, it's being encapsulated our device as a virtual device, we want to be able to look for either virtual volumes, or in this case we know the device number, which is 192, so we can actually do a, a much easier way of just doing a manual selection. So let's go find our device 192. Here it is. Right, thin device, 100 gigabytes. Great. So it's going to create a storage group for us. That's all good. Okay. So now we've got our storage group, which is which is just the group of LUNs. We're actually going to then provision this out to a host. So Mars SMC01 has already got a port group, so the port groups define the front end ports we're going to use. I think that one's fine. We've already got it that server zone to those ports. Uh, and we're going to create a masking view. So the masking view is a relationship between the host, which is really the uh, grouping of initiators, the front end ports, and our storage group, which has our LUNs in it. All right, so there it goes, provisioning that out. And that's really all the steps required to encapsulate uh, data intact uh, storage using federated tiered storage and present it out to a server. Okay, so now let's have a look at how we can use a, an externally provisioned device using federated tiered storage and incorporate that into our uh, virtual provisioning pools and our fast VP policies. So from the dashboard, We've uh, previously already encapsulated this one terabyte LUN, and we're now going to have a look at how we can configure that into a pool and incorporate it into FAST. So going to our pools, we can see there that we have a range of uh, different types of, uh, of storage. We have fiber channel, RAID 1, RAID 5, some EFD, and some SATA. We also have our uh, 100, uh, 100 gigabyte LUN that we encapsulated data in place previously. We're going to go and create a brand new pool for using that external storage. And it's very straightforward. We give it a name. We're going to be looking at external storage. There we go. 
and we want to create some devices here. Beautiful. Uh, and if we wish to, we can set subscription rates. Uh, we can also do some uh, really clever things here with compression. So we can enable data compression um, for this particular pool if we wish to and have that automatically applied with our fast VP uh, uh, aging process. So it's a very neat technology. All right, so we've got our devices configured. Let's get that underway. We'll add it to our job. And then we're going to go and execute this job and, and create this uh, this new pool. If for whatever reason that we wanted to run this job at a later time, we can schedule it. There's a scheduling button uh, that allows to uh, uh, run this at, at some point later on. Where's it gone? Just off my window. There we go. So let's run this guy. All right, away he goes. It's been successful. And if we go back and have a look at our thin pools, we'll be able to see that uh, we have, in fact, now created a brand new pool, CXFTS, which is uh, one terabyte in capacity. Um, ready to go. So we can use that and provision brand new LUNs out of that. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to incorporate it into some to uh, allow us to use more capacity um, for our existing hosts using FastVP. So Fast is very straightforward. Uh, it uses the concept of tiers. And really all we need to do here is just define a tier uh, to use that external capacity. So, all right, so we're going to have an external FTS tier, and we're going to choose external as our different uh, uh, as our characteristics. Now, we can choose to, to uh, provide different levels of, of performance capability for that external tier. So if we know that we've got a very high performance um, uh, device that we've, it's virtualized in behind the VMAX, we can actually set the performance level that we expect from this external storage to be equivalent to EFD that we have internal to the array, or perhaps like 15K or 10K fiber channel, or like SATA. So in this case, uh, we've got a pretty old CX and it's not that fast, so we're going to define it as SATA. Obviously, we know that it's unprotected. Here we can now choose our federated tiered storage pool that we created just previously, and Away we go. So we now have a new tier inside Fast. So really, really quick and easy. If we now go and have a look at our uh, Fast configuration, to be able to start using that external storage is really straightforward. All we need to go in here is have a look at our policies. We'll be able to create a uh, new policy or adjust our policies, I should say, uh, to uh, leverage that external storage. So let's have a look at our, uh, let's have a look. We've got one here from Silver. Let's have a look at, at Silver. Let's go and, and uh, see what it looks like. Right, so we can see here that our Silver tier has got 5% of our uh, tier 1, 35% tier 2, 60% uh, on our tier 3. And now we have our uh, new external tier that we created, our external FTS tier we can now allow some capacity to go out to there. So we might say up to 50% of this LUN in the silver tier can now be placed on that external storage. So we'll go along here and update this. And we now have made that storage available. So literally a few minutes and uh, we've now effectively given ourselves access to an extra one terabyte of external storage um, with our existing hosts using FastVP.